Welcome back to our multi-part tutorial on creating a walk cycle. So at this point, we have a pretty solid rough animation test with the body and the legs. Next step is to add arms. And then we're going to go through cleaning up and adding some overlapping action. So it might be good to return to our real world observation for a moment and just take a look at how the arms swing. So as the right leg is swinging forward, the left arm is also swinging upwards. And because of this offset, you get this nice contrapposto twist that's happening with the body where the hips are rotating in one direction and the shoulders are rotating in another as the arms and the legs swing back and forth. And that's what we want to replicate in our animation. Okay, so I have my rough walk cycle here and I've cleaned it up a little bit more and I've added some construction lines to help me figure out the placement of the arms. And as you can see, what I've done is I've plotted the arc of the crosshair there and that's where I'm going to put the arm. So I'm going to create a new layer for the arm and I want to do that because all this hard work that I put into the body, I don't necessarily want to mess it up. And then also then we have the ability to offset the timing of the arm, which we will do after we've animated it. And so when we're in this contact pose where the left leg is forward, that's when the right arm is going to be forward. So if I use this pivot point here as my point of attachment, So what we're looking for in the swing of the arms is that we want to have this kind of nice pendulum style swing, right? So the arms kind of going to swing back like this. We want to have some easing towards the upper end of the swing. But the complication is that we have this sort of rotation and, and up and down movement of the body, right? So we can't just animate the arm swinging. What we could do is we could animate this on one layer and then we could go back and we could actually place it on the body. And that might be the simplest way to do it. So let's turn off the body for the moment and let's say, okay, well, what is this arm going to look like when it is all the way back, right? If it was just in the same position, but just kind of swinging all the way back, well, we'd have this sort of nice arc here. I want to keep, make sure that the length is there. We probably have just a little bit kind of moving up in, in there, right? So if we would do that. And then the hand would show a little bit of overlapping action, right? So um, let's say this is drawing number 13, right? And this is drawing number one. Now, how do we get from here to here? Well, let's kind of think about, um, we can turn on our guide layer here and we can draw an arc for the elbow. So if this is one and this is 13, this is going to be number seven, but we want to also have some easing. Zoom in here a little bit. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, six, five, four, three, two, one. So if you note, let's see, two, three, four, this is number five. Seven, eight, nine, and then there's not a whole lot of movement going on on either end, right? So let's start with these other breakdowns first because they'll be easier to draw and the in-betweenings get pretty close. Okay, so this is going to be number seven and make sure the length of our limb stays constant. Okay, let's do number five. Let's do number six here. Okay, and now we've got to put in all of those easing frames, right? Um, so this is where it's going to get a little bit tricky. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to divide these in half until I get down to number one. 
and that'll give me the easing that I want. Okay, so this is number four. All right, let's see now what we've got. Not too bad. I think I'm losing a little bit of length. Looks like. Maybe need to go back and fix that. This one I think is probably here. So I might just give this a little bit more length. Double check. This one probably needs a little bit more too. Better, I think. Okay, so now we gotta get back from number seven to number 13. So I'm gonna take sort of the same approach. Um, this one's gonna be number eight. And, well, which one's halfway in between? Maybe we do number nine. And just so I can kind of keep the length consistent, let's try doing something like this. Okay, so now let's do number eight. Okay, so how, how are we looking here? Very nice, all right. So now we've got to get back. We've got to get back to the beginning. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this frame over here so that we can see what we are aiming towards. But the thing, the complicated thing, is that we are gonna to need to think about the overlapping action of this lower arm here. Right, so it's not just going to go in reverse. We can, we don't just go in reverse. Um, there's going to be sort of this nice flip up of the hand as the arm starts to swing pendulum forward. So the upper arm is going to still maintain this sort of pendulum swing here, but the lower arm is what's going to be a little bit different. So we can start with the upper arm. This is number thirteen. We need to number that. Back to our guide, and this is thirteen. So our halfway point is going to be number 19, and then we want to break it down sort of in the same way, with the same sort of easing. And I think what I might do is I might Go ahead and do the breakdowns, make that one blue, of just this upper arm, and then I'm going to do the overlapping action on this hand as a straight ahead piece of animation for this first part here. Okay, so let's think about how this action works. So as it has slowed down and is starting to move in this direction, the momentum of the hand is still carrying it kind of in this direction. So it's gonna to start to kind of pop up a little bit. 
So on this frame, we might have the lower arm start to drop just a tiny bit. And then this hand is still sort of moving up in this direction here. I want to turn off this part of the onion skinning and actually maybe make this two so that I can really see the arc that that's following. Now I'm kind of breaking the curve oh, just a little bit. Uh, let's see how that's starting to look. Make sure our... Okay, so I think we need to let the hand start to drop down now. Let's see if it was going to drop down, it would start to do this. But that is in the wrong place because we've moved forward this much, so we have to... Oops. need to move forward a little bit more. Okay, so you can see kind of where we're aiming towards, right? So we need to get this arm to kind of go down like that. So that will happen in the next set of in-betweens. Okay, so we can change our onion skinning again and do the upper arm kind of getting into what that arc looks like. So this is going to be drawing number 20. And since I'm sort of just going straight ahead at this point with the hand, I can kind of just go for it. I think my elbow has gotten a little long too, actually. So now you'll see, instead of um, animating pose to pose, I'm actually finishing this off pretty much straight ahead. I do have my last frame as a reference. Since this easing is basically just doing in-betweens by halves, then I can literally just, it's like in between, but I'm working straight ahead. Okay, so if we turn this off, let's see. A little bit floppy, but I think that's okay for Perry. He can be a little floppy. Um, also a little bit of volume consistency with the hand, but we may clean that up in the, in the cleanup stage. Um, so we have this really nice easing on the pendulum swing and some nice overlapping action happening at the end of the arm there. Okay, so what do you notice right now? Right now, the arm is swinging really nicely and Perry is walking pretty nicely, but they don't seem to connect it. And that's because I put this rotation into the body, which means that the shoulders are rotating along with each step. So if the arm is just pinned right in one spot, that's not gonna work very well. So what we need to do now is we need to take each of these and place it in the correct spot. And that is why I have these nice construction lines and this guide here. So this just lets me move the arm in each frame to the correct point.
Ooh, okay. That's a lot of work, right? A lot of fiddling and a lot of double checking stuff. So what do we do about the other arm? Now, the other arm is swinging basically exactly the same, but just offset by one step, right? So as the left arm is going forward, the right arm is back. And as the right arm is forward, the left arm is back. Now, most of that arm is hidden behind the body. So we can kind of save ourselves a bit of work by duplicating the animation we already have and then just adjusting it a little bit and then erasing the parts that we're not going to see because they're obscured by the body. Now I do need to take the first 12 frames that I've drawn and then put them over at the end because I have to have that symmetrical offset. So now you can see both arms and we just need to erase the parts that are being obscured by the body. I'm not sure I like the way that the arm sort of sticks out like that. I might go back and do this again and make the elbow move back further on that backswing and make it less like Perry's sort of reaching forward with each step. I think that looks a little bit weird. Um, this is the process though. You know, as an animator, we make stuff and then we look at it and we're like, mm, you know, it's not quite right. And then you go back and you do it again. So that's all part of the process.